that is all that Ifris is. That's all that it is. It tells you what the objectives are, what are the qualitative characteristics are, what your elements of the financial statement are, and what are your assumptions. If you know that, it's straightforward. I think we have to stop here. Okay. And then just before we take a break, just on that. This is the qualitative characteristics of financial statements. When you sign off a set of financial statements, you are actually saying that you have satisfied all of those. It states that you first saying is that, especially there your primary qualities, that it's relevant and that it is fairly represented. So, how many of the financial statements are understandable by your clients? None. None. And the reason we don't care about our clients, because we go back to what the standard says. The financial statements are prepared for people who are lit financially literate. Isn't it? So we say it's only for people who can read financial statements. Is that fair? No. But also and that is where we start going wrong. It must be understandable to your client. Because who use the financial statements? Your client use it. But we don't do that because we say, we only do it because we expect you to be financially literate. If they were financially literate, they won't need you. Isn't it? And that is what it says. But under relevance, those three are important. How many of you people give the financial state statements to your clients within three months of their financial year end? Hmm? You have to do so, otherwise it's old information. No. It, it's how do you sell your services? If you can go and say that I'll give you your financial statements where you can use it for decision making. But for me to do that, you need to keep me happy because I'm going to add value to you. Your year end is 28th of February, 15th of March, here's your financial statements. That person won't know how to pay you. <laughs> but also we have the technology to do it. It's not impossible. The issue was if you applied your professional judgment throughout, because one of the issues that was found when South Africa, remember they were number one in auditing and accounting standards. And what they found was on the listed companies that they should issue their financial statements faster than any other country in the world. South African accountants could issue financial statements very, very fast. And what they found was that it's not about the being issuing fast financials. It's again what Prof said about the qualitative characteristics. If you actually didn't have your underlying assumptions correct to begin with, you could issue very uh, financial statements very quickly but it's too late to correct anything in it. And I think that's also very important because the future trends depend on what has historically happened. So you have to be very careful because you can't go back and change the past. The other thing is also about feedback value. I don't draw financial statements. I provide qualitative reports. I look at the financial statements and I use those financial statements to write a report, a narrative report about what the figures mean. And I can tell you, I earn seven times the accountants earn. And I did nothing. I just took the information there, and I wrote it down in a nice story, and I linked it to, you use that information for that decision, yes, the decision you made benefited you last year. Use this information for that, you made a mistake here, how do we manage your risk over there? And that is much more exciting because every client then becomes a different task. Because I can't do the same thing over and over. It's boring. And then also predictive values. I use the financial statements to tell the client where they will be in the next year or in the next three years, and I then compare that to what their medium-term and long-term goals are. Also remember, if you didn't link into the business model, if you're predicting very positive things for your client and the industry is declining, means you actually haven't applied the business model correctly. 
because this industry is actually a declining industry and your financial statements and your business thing that you're actually going to actually uh, exceed, it's either, you have, it's either you have an intangible asset in the business that's going to actually like drive this business ab above other businesses or you actually misrepresented the entire thing. And that's why you'll pick it up with the predictive value. And the banks will pick it up very quickly as well. And the creditors. So those are the stuff that you need to make sure when you sign financial statements you have satisfied. You need to have a checklist to say, did I give them predictive values? No, then you must say, I started off with 100,000, so I'm now dropping one zero, so it's now 10,000 for my services. Then you say, does it fairly represent? No, you drop another zero, so your services is only worth 1,000. Now, I work the other way around. I start with 100,000. Did I do it? Yes, I add another zero. <laughs> <laughs> because that is the value that I add to them. <laughs> and they pay me. I mean, I do work for some clients. Then I just sat with them. And I, when I get back to my office at home, then I see there's already a deposit and I hear my phone going off and I wonder what's happening and I see deposited into your account. <laughs> but that is because this is what I start looking at. No, I speak to them and I say, this is what I'm going to charge you. Then they already put it in my account. They're so, they, they, they so confident that I will deliver and I will deliver quality. When I send the invoice, then they want to pay me again. <laughs> hmm? like. hmm? Okay, and then just the last thing I want to do with you is that, which we'll discuss after lunchtime is, I've never taught the standards in the manner they teach it at universities. Those are the only four stuff you need to know about the standards. It's applicable to all the standards. Classification, measurement, recognition, presentation, and disclosure. All of them falls into that category. And yeah, each time it's now a break, and we'll do that then after your session. Okay. Any questions before we leave? No questions. Yeah, he said he's so confident that he knew you won't have questions because we're so good. <laughs>